Hello everyone and welcome to your 65th Cocoa Programming Tutorial. In this tutorial we're talking about creating Swift frameworks. So if you want to create a framework that you could reuse across multiple projects that you have, you can generate a framework and we can use that for, you know, basically just have reusable code. Um, some examples of frameworks that you're all already very familiar with, Cocoa, Foundation, UI Kit, Core Graphics, Sprite Kit, all these are examples of dynamic frameworks that Apple has provided within the system. And you simply link against those frameworks so that every application that links against those can have the functionality of that single framework, which is pretty cool, right? So obviously Apple utilizes this to uh, its benefit because it just has to create one version and every application can simply link against that single version of the framework and that just helps with uh, not duplicating as much code now there are also third-party frameworks that if you use uh, you know if you've explored github and you've made your own projects and stuff like that you've probably come across different swift ones such as uh, swifty json or alamo fire perhaps you've used uh, which isn't actually a swift framework but you've maybe used the facebook framework or there's there's tons of different frameworks out there that uh, are very easy to make. And the really cool thing about frameworks is that you can have a project on GitHub, for example, make a framework and somebody can just include your project, perhaps if they use things like CocoaPods or um, one of my favorites, with this, which is Carthage. If they use a thing like Carthage, they can simply build your project uh, right from your uh, repository. I think lots of cool things that you can do with uh, dynamic frameworks. So we're gonna talk about that in this tutorial. So the first thing uh, to note, this works across all the different platforms. You can do iOS, watchOS, OS 10, all will be the same, but in this, obviously, it's keeping with the Cocoa tradition of this series, we're going to make a Cocoa framework. Let's make a logging framework. So I'm just gonna call this framework logging framework. And as you can see, we have a new target that's created. This is a framework target. This is not an application. We also have this little header file that includes a bunch of random information about the framework itself, such as the version number. Really, this information is not too important to you. What you want to do is make your own classes. So to do this, we can simply say file new and new file. So command N. I don't know why I always show that, but command N is the way that you should make new files. Uh, OS 10 source, Swift file. We wanna make a new file. I'm gonna call logging.swift. So here we go. We have a new Swift file called logging.swift. I'm gonna make a new class. Um, and let me do this. Nope. Class, Swift, nope, Swift class. Logging, and uh, what I want to do is we're going to make an initializer for this. And anyway, that's just sort of a, a stub in for uh, a logging class. So the one thing that's very important to know about frameworks is that if you need to expose a class to an outside entity, so in the case of a framework, you're always trying to expose all the class information that you want to another project, right? Somebody else is using your framework. So to expose the class to an outside entity or an outside uh, project, you need to declare the class as a public class. It needs to be visible outside of this project. If you do not declare it to be public, then it's going to only be visible within the framework, which is perhaps what you want. If you're building the framework, you might have classes that are really only uh, related to the, the framework itself. But if you need to create a class that is visible to people using your framework, then you need to declare everything as public. Um, so let's just go through a few examples of things we can do. I'm gonna make a public function here. I'm just gonna create my own version of nslog. And my version is simply just gonna take a string, but uh, it's going to print out the current date and the project name as well along with that. So to get the project name, uh, I can just go into the NS bundle, main bundle, info dictionary, unwrap that, and CF bundle uh, name. This is really not important. This is just something I'm going to use to get the name of the project that's actually using this NS log call. From here, I'm just going to make a print statement where we are going to print out 
the current date. So NS date, the initializer will create the current date for us. We can say name and string, right? So I'm literally just printing out the current date, the name of the thing that's running this, or the name of the project that's running this, and the string that we pass into the function. Let's do a few more of these. We have now some uh, methods that we might want to add to the logging class. So we can create a test method. And this test method, test method is going to just print out test method. We're also going to create a public class function. We're going to call test class method. Again, it's not a function. I always say function just because it's the keyword. So it trips me up. Uh, test class method. All right, there we go. So here is our entire framework. Obviously, this is not a very impressive framework. I would never want to ship this in anything really. But um, if you want to create a framework of your own, right, this is essentially the process that you go through. Everything needs to be public that you want to uh, make visible to someone. If you don't want something to be visible to another, you know, another project, you just don't declare it as public. Simple as that. All right, so now we're done. We have now created our standalone Swift framework, and we can now reuse this in another project. So I'm going to quit out of this. We're going to make a new project. So Command Shift N. We're going to make a new Cocoa application. Call this Lesson 65. Create. Ta da! And here we go. So let's talk about how we can include these frameworks into our projects. So with uh, this, we have the uh, app delegate, right? Standard, standard stuff that we see here. And what we want to do is import our logging framework that we just created into this project. There's two ways of going about this. One way is if we have access to the Xcode project, we can actually just drag the Xcode project right into our uh, project. And we can just uh, add the framework right from within that. I'll show you how to do that. The other way is if you're only given a framework and you're not given the actual project to work with. Um, I've actually worked with a few of these. So uh, an example, this is the Spotify API that uh, is currently in beta. But if you're working with their framework, they only give you access to the framework itself. You don't have access to any of the code that they use to actually write the framework. So th that's sort of the second option is that you, if you need to use the framework uh, directly into your project, then you, there's that second way. So the first way, let's talk about that. Um, I want to first off go into Finder. So I'm going to make a new window here for the desktop. Under the logging framework that I created earlier, I'm simply going to drag in the Xcode project and drop it into our uh, current application. All right. So make sure that you've actually closed this Xcode project because if you don't, it'll probably yell at you. Um, but anyway, now that we have this, right? What I want to do is under my Lesson 65 project, under General, I want to add an embedded binary. So I'm going to add under embedded binary the logging framework that I have, and this is just included in our, uh, our project that we have. So I can just hit Add on this. And now we, can, we have now added the logging framework into our project. So that's cool. That's all we need to do. And from here, I can start using it. So I can say Import logging. If, for example, this doesn't start auto-completing for you, you can simply hit Command B, and this will build your entire project, including the binaries that you have embedded. And once this is done building for the first time through, you should be able to just automatically just type it, and it should auto-complete logging framework for you. All right, let's test out some of our functions. So we have that NS log that I created. Uh, we have string, which is, again, this is our version of NS log. You obviously should not call a printing function NS log because that is Apple's, you know, NS is Apple's uh, particular uh, prefix. So don't do this, but obviously I'm just showing you things that you can do. This is our NS log. If I want to use the logging class, I can say log.test class method. I can create an instance of logging if I want. Logging using our public initializer. Now I can say log.test method, for example. All right, if I run this, we can now build and wait a little bit. And we can see now that we 
da, da, we have all the great information that we need for our project. We have our little NS log that prints the date, the application that we're working in, which is less than 65. And this is our NS log, which is the message, message that I passed in. And then the other two methods that we added as well for that class. All right, so that's, that's it. That's all you have to do. We just created a framework. We added the Xcode project into the application we're working on. And then the only other step that you have to do is add it as an embedded binary. And this will automatically show up underneath your project, uh, obviously, if you haven't already added it. All right, so that's uh, one way to go about it. So I'm going to go ahead now and actually remove this. So I'm going to delete the embedded binary. I'm going to delete the reference to our logging framework. Don't actually delete the Xcode project, but just delete the reference for now. And I'm going to clean the derived data for this project just so that if I build this, you should now see that we have no such module, for example, on this function. Or uh, what am I trying to say? Not function, but there, there is no logging framework basically embedded in this project anymore. All right, so now uh, that's the appropriate response. Or obviously, we, we aren't linking against this, this logging framework anymore. The second way that we want to go about doing this is if we're only given the framework, we're not given the Xcode project, how can we uh, include that framework into our project? So the way we can do this, I'm going to go back into the finder. I'm going to go and open up the logging framework that we have created here. And what I'm going to do is actually build this logging framework to be ready for release, basically. So if I want, I can say, uh, I'm basically just going to, well, there's a few things you could do. If you want to make this framework just ready for people to use, you could switch the build to be a release build, and then you can just actually do that. It doesn't really matter for our purposes. I'm going to leave it as debug for now, but I'll, uh, that's just something you should know is that you can change the framework so that if you're ready for releasing, you can get rid of all the debug flags and such for uh, the particular uh, release. But anyway, uh, that's just something you know. We'll leave it on release, I guess, for now. If we hit run on this project, this should now make a version of our framework for this actual, uh, you know, for the framework. So it's actually going to compile a version of the framework. If I go under products and right click on show in finder, I now have access to, you know, the debug and the release builds that I want for this framework. So that's what I want. Now that I have this framework, I now need to figure out a way to include this framework in our actual application. So our application is less than 65. If I want to include perhaps vendor frameworks or third party frameworks, I can make a new folder for this. I'm just going to call it vendor. Again, it's, this is just a folder that I'm using to include third party frameworks. I can now drag the, the framework that I have right, right into this project. Uh, this is common, for example, if you were using the Facebook framework or something like that, um, you might end up dragging their framework directly into your project, and this is an example of doing that. So in, within the vendor folder, we have our logging framework. Great, we're good to go. Now I just have to, I have the framework basically added to this folder. I just need to actually include it in the project. So I'm going to close out of our logging framework, go back to lesson 65. I need to go back to embed binaries. You'll notice that it doesn't actually visibly see uh, this as an option for us. It's because the, the framework isn't actually included in our project. But if I want to include this framework in our project, I simply have to say add other. If I go under vendor, I can now see the logging framework, right? This The vendor folder is the one that we just created. I'll add the logging framework right into this. I should say copy items if needed. Um, in this case, I just I, it doesn't matter. It's already in the folder, so it won't actually copy it anywhere, but probably something you should do anyway. Um, but it's up to you. Maybe you don't actually want to copy it. Uh, totally up to you if you want to copy the framework. It really doesn't affect it. It just means that if you move the framework somewhere later, that if you don't copy it into your project, you're going to not have a reference to it. All right, so again, we just hit the embed binaries option. I hit add other, I find the framework, we're good to go now. You'll notice that the framework is now added to our project, so we should see a framework actually added to the project. And from here, we are good to go. So if I go back to my app delegate and I run this, I should be able to compile this with absolutely no issues. So there we go, I run, our project builds, 
all the standard printing stuff happens as well. So basically the, the framework work, the, the framework actually works, right? Our, we basically just exported the framework from our original project. I moved the framework into our project. I include it in the actual Xcode project section under the embedded binaries, and we can now use this project. One thing that I'm gonna mention is something you might come up um, or might be a problem that you run into if you're trying to use frameworks. If under, uh, basically if you can't, for whatever reason you can't find the framework that you're using. So you perhaps uh, try to link towards it or you embed it and it doesn't actually see the framework, you can uh, add it as a search path. So if I search for search paths under the build settings for this project or this uh, target, we can see that under search, uh, the framework search paths, we actually have added the vendor framework and that's because I, I use the embedded option. If for whatever reason you don't have this, uh, if you don't embed the framework and you're just linking to it, but you need to link to it and it's not actually uh, included in your project, you'll need to add the search path directly into your build settings. And you can simply do this by hitting the add button and you add the, the path to where the framework is actually located. Again, if you're embedding a framework, it means that you're actually going to have a copy of the framework within your project. If you're linking to a framework, it just means that you're going to link to a place on the disk, right? So if I, I usually you only want to do this if the framework is something like Apple's frameworks, right? And you already are guaranteed that the framework is going to be on the system. All right, so that's pretty much all I want to talk about for frameworks. If you have any other questions on anything else framework related, please leave your comments in the questions below. And I will see you guys in an upcoming tutorial. See you then.